Hello there amazing viewers and subscribers and welcome to my new review on Doctor Who Army of Ghosts and of course Doomsday. Now this is the finale to series 2. So series 2, story 10, episodes 12 and 13. I do kind of class like two part stories as one whole story so... Like for Aliens of London, I class that as the fourth story. Dalek is the fifth story. And of course, the long game, the, the long game of Father's Day is the seventh and eighth stories. And then episodes nine and ten, I class that as the like main eighth story, I have to admit. But anyway, Army and Ghosts and Doomsday, what am I going to say about this finale? You're probably wondering, well, my whole opinion has kind of changed. So I'm going to talk about the episode itself and then what I personally think about this two-parter. So, opening up of it, I'm not really too keen on the opening part because one, we have Rose standing on Bad Wolf Bay. She's there talking about how she met the Doctor, that nothing happened in her life for the first 19 years. Then she met a man called the Doctor who can change his face. And of course, she's there with David Tennant and you can tell they're both are like lovey-dovey. It's just like... I really don't like the lovey dovey stuff between Ten and Rose because again, Ten has something that was needed at the time for the show, not what is needed now. So when you go back and rewatch his era, I'm sorry to say that, but I really think what at the time the Tenth Doctor was actually needed to be human because he just lost Gallifrey. Of course, he was going to adopt Earth as his second home, and of course, he's going to start experiencing human emotions like with the whole lovey dovey stuff. Which is why back then in 2006, 7, 8, 9 and 10, I had no, really had no issue watching the Tenet era. But now I'm literally 27 years old. I go back and we watch certain episodes from the Tenet era. Some episodes have changed in my opinion because I do like Series 3 more than I used to do back five years ago. And then of course Series 2 again has changed but I still don't enjoy it as... Some other people do. I still think it is the worst Tenant series out there. But it's still got some flipping good stories in it though. For a series that I think is absolutely bad. And even though it was the second series. And coming off the high note that series one had. I was a bit disappointed still what we watch on my recent rewatch for this season. Army Goes to Doomsday. It's kind of a good story. Because it ends the whole lovey dovey stuff between Ten and Rose and Fort until... Story on Earth and Journey's End in Series 4, but Series 4 is mainly Donna, so that's okay, to be honest with you, because it's not really shown there as much as it is with this two-parter. And then, of course, we find out that apparently this is how Rose died, but there again, she doesn't die because she's just trapped in a parallel universe. So, in a way, she is dead in our universe, but in a parallel universe, she's basically still alive. So, you know, that's kind of okay. The whole subplot with Torchwood at the beginning of this one as well, where you kind of got them activating the ghost shift, and of course you got these ghosts coming through. One of them, Jackie thinks it's her dad, but it's not because it's just her memories. And it actually turns out it's a Cyberman from the parallel universe. They are traveling from their universe into our universe by using the Void, which is basically breaking down the walls and the barriers are between universes, between our universe and our parallel universe. I also have to admit, I kind of like Army of Ghosts a lot more than I used to do. Now, this is why. One, we don't really find that's the same until literally like the last five minutes of the episode. So you've got the Doctor working about, about the ghost, getting the coordinations to Torchwood. Torchwood's there to basically arrest the Doctor. And of course, the Doctor being the Doctor, he kind of says Jackie, a.k.a. Rose's mom, is Rose. That she's aged by looking into the time vortex. I still piss myself laughing at that sign. Yeah, she's not the best. Just last week, she looked into the time vortex and aged about 50 years. I'm 40. Bless. I really do like the 10th Doctor with that, that little bit because that comedy bit there is kind of funny as well. When Levon Hurtman basically shows the Doctor the sphere and how it came through to our universe, I like the way how the Doctor goes one way and she goes, no Doctor, and he literally turns around and walks the other way. I have to admit, I do like the scientist as well. I do think he's a good character because when you kind of see the ties dematerializing on the security camera and of course... Levon goes, Reg, it's him. And then he just thinks it's the doctor in the sphere. And he goes to the sphere, now we got you. And then it's just like, nope, no, you haven't. Oh, we know that because we're the viewers, but this guy doesn't know it. And I'm there literally thinking to myself, 
yeah, okay, you know what, you're just an imbecile, aren't you? If you think that space, that sphere has got the Doctor inside it, yeah, you're just a bit thick, aren't you? You know, go and read the Doctor's notes through all of the stuff with units, then you will know what the TARDIS looks like, not this great big sphere. I have to admit, I do find that a bit funny where he just goes, no, we got you, and it's just like, dude, just go and do your research on the Doctor, please, just go and do your research. And then, of course, we do see Mickey as well in little bits and dabs during the scene. And then, of course, you do have the reveal of Mickey with Rose. And he goes, oh, I've missed you. And she goes, oh, yeah, I missed you too. And he goes, what's in there? I don't know. Cyber Emperor, Cyber King, whatever it is. The salmon followed it. So here I am. And then, of course, when the sphere doors open, you've got the Doctor basically on the actual first level with Torchwood. And, of course... The voids open and then you've got the ghosts coming through and they all turn out to be Cybermen, every single one of them. This is the point after they all get captured by the Sermon with the Doctor and Liv Hurtman. The Doctor says the Oscar Drug is picking up an alien, a signal, and he finds out it's the parallel Cybermen. I really do enjoy this episode, I have to admit. Then, of course, when it opens up and you've got the Dalek saying, Location, our fly forms detected. Exterminate. I uh, I love that cliffhanger. I admit it's one of the best cliffhangers that I have seen in series two. I mean, I do like the beast, the uh, the Satan's Pit one and the Impossible Planet. That's a good, that's a good finale, same as the end cliffhanger for our um, Rise of the Cybermen when you got them smashing through and the Doctor's there saying we surrender. Um, I do enjoy that cliffhanger, but this has got to be the best cliffhanger from. The two parts in series two. Then, of course, we get to Doomsday. Carrying on with the whole story again. I have to admit, I do like the fact that the Doctor asks how the Sun will travel through their universe. And then, of course, the Doctor being the Doctor with the whole 3D specs. Basically, watches the Sun travel walking down the corridor. And you see a Dalek and the Doctor's just there going, what? You just see the Doctor's face where it's kind of where he's going, oh. Like that. And he just goes, oh. When he thinks, oh, great, the Daleks are here. And then, of course, the Daleks and Simon are there talking. And then, of course, the Simon go, Daleks plus Cybermen together. We could upgrade universe, your proposal and alliance. That is correct. Request denied. I like the way how the Daleks just shoots down the two Simon. And then the Simon are there to claim one Daleks. And Daleks that goes, we will destroy the Cybermen with one Dalek. You are fairy at oh my What is that? You are better at dying. I really do like the conflict between the Daleks and the Simon. The whole bit with the Genesis Ark, that is a Time Lord's prison. The Time has put all the Daleks in there. I think I can kind of believe the Time Lord's doing that at first. You know, they've gone to war with the Daleks. They, the Daleks have fed a nearby system. As punishment, they punch Daleks and trap them inside a prison called the Genesis Ark. I do kind of see them doing that. But when you think about it that we know later on, from the offence of the Time War, you wouldn't really think the Time War would actually do that. But if it's from the early point of the Time War, with the Eighth Doctor basically avoiding the Time War, like we now know for Hanks to Big Finish, then possibility... I really think that's right about that time period, the Time War's put the Dykes in the James' Ark. Um, the fact that the Doctor has to open up the Void to stop the Simon and the Dykes, and of course the Cult of Scarra do escape, is kind of good as well. I do like the whole CGI effects when you've got the Simon and the Dykes going through. Rose is there about to be pulled through the void. And I'm just there going, ah, nope, her dad saves her. Oh, okay. So we think that's going to be the end of the episode. And apart from them touching the wall to get basically in their own universes, the Doctor walks away looking sad. And then you just hear his voice and Rose is there talking to her dad, talking to Jackie, talking to Mickey about what she can hear. And then, of course, they drive to Bad Wolf Bay, and it turns out the Doctor can just say goodbye because he's burned up her son to say goodbye, which is something I find a little bit confusing because he never, the Doctor doesn't really like goodbyes. I mean, of course, he says goodbye to Susan, Ian, and Barbara, but some Doctors don't really say goodbye to their companions. If, say, like for as an occasion, Perry, because the Doctor was pulled out of time, he never really got to say a goodbye to Perry, so. Of course, he is there literally burning up his son to say goodbye, where normally he just says goodbye in person. I would have loved it if they just kind of left Rose basically talking about the Doctor getting on with her life in the parallel universe, working for their torture. And, the and then a scene showing the Doctor in our universe to um, going on thinking all about Rose, and of course, Donna appears. But there again, though, we wouldn't really have the sympathy, the sympathy that we have when they got the Doctor talking his ties. you got Rose talking... 
to him saying, oh, I love you. And the doctor goes, quite right too. And this is my last chance to say it, Rose Tyler. He never says the line, but you know he's going to say it. And, of course, Rose is there crying. I'm kind of thinking to myself, yeah. I understand why this one is very popular with some people, because it is a good episode. I don't like the whole lovey-dovey stuff. So when you have Rose saying, I love you, and the doctor never gets to say it, I'm like, whew. Yeah, he never says it. <laughs> okay, he never says it, but you know it's a ploy, but you know, I don't really mind if it's like a ploy, but never said. I mean, God, I really hate the whole lovely stuff of Trin, Ten and Rose, so I'm kind of glad it's over at this point. And then, of course, you've got the Doctor crying, and he wipes his he wipes his eyes from these tears, and then, of course, who pops up? Then Catherine Tate saying, what, 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 who are you? What, where am I? What, what the hell is this place? What? Um, so that's basically the subplot between the episodes. My thoughts on this two-parter, I'm going to be honest with you, it's really changed my opinion on this rewatch. Because, one, I like the fact we have the Daleks and Cybermen meeting each other for the first time. Technically, it would not have been the first time if the BBC got their own way to have the Daleks and Cybermen meet each other in the finale to season five in that later became... The Wheel in Space, because they wanted to do a Dalek Simon story back with Patrick Troughton for season five. If anybody knew that, I'd, um, I found that out back a couple of years ago when I was researching what season five and they were gonna and they actually had a plan, but Terry Nation said no because he didn't really want his Daleks to reappear in Doctor Who since they apparently killed off the moth in the evil of the Daleks. I do like the whole battle between the Daleks and the Cybermen. It's such a shame we don't really see that carry on through the rest of New Who because. We see them team up with each other and the Master in the power of the Doctor. Where the fact the time the Daleks went to war with the Time Lords, you would really think the Daleks would have just exterminated the Master kind of just there. Instead of making this whole alliance between him, the Cyber Masters, Cyber Warriors and the Daleks, you know, makes, you know, just a little bit of little tizzle there. I have to say a little bit of a... Uh, I don't really care about that a lot. I don't have to admit, I really don't care about. I also have to admit, this two-parter, I think David Tennant is absolutely brilliantly as the 10th Doctor in this one. Again, it's not like too much focus on the whole lovey dovey stuff. He does send Rose to go into a parallel universe so he can close up the void so that way she doesn't get pulled in because she's got the void stuff. And I have to admit, that was kind of good to see the 10th Doctor kind of did that. But then, of course, you've got Rose and the 10th Doctor is there angry at her. Which is understandable because he sent her to be safe and then she comes back into the, the danger. I have to admit, I do really enjoy this two-parter more than I used to. So, I'm going to rate this two-parter a whopping 10 out of 10. Because my rewatch of this one is just absolutely superb and absolutely brilliant. So, stay tuned because tomorrow I have got another review to come out tomorrow. And, of course, I've now got quite a few reviews to do for to catch up with these reviews. Because these reviews... I've very, very backlogged because I've been busy with other stuff go coming out in this channel. And these reviews have been pushed back. So I'm kind of get all these reviews out now because I've literally got uh, four to do. And then, of course, I've got another four for next week. And then the week after, another four. And then another four. I'm going to try and do these into fours. So you get four reviews in one week. And then on the Friday or the Wednesday, you kind of get the latest episode of everything I own from each season of Doctor Who and of course it is season 12 so I kind of want that to come out on Wednesday or Friday so I do kind of want to get these reviews straight out of the bat because I've got so many reviews to do as, as you all know from my post I did on my YouTube channel and on Facebook and as well as Instagram my four reviews for this week is Army Ghosts and Doomsday which is this one the Keeper of Traken, as well as Earthshock and Sparehead from Space. I have got to do my review for The Invisible Enemy. I've got to do a review on Legopolis, because I have watched that recently. I've got to do my review on Castra Valva. So yeah, I have got quite a few reviews to do. So I hope you all are looking forward to watching these reviews. Please do like, subscribe and share. And let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of Doctor Who, Army of Ghosts and Doomsday, the finale to Series 2? Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you not like it or love it? Let me know in the comments. Please do like, subscribe and share. And join for more awesome Doctor Who content.